Good morning, Boker Tov from Yerushalayim. This morning I want to introduce you to a term in Hebrew that every Israeli who served in the army knows very well. It is called Tzav Shmone. It means in English an emergency order to active duty number eight. The number eight has to do with a clause in the regulation that enables the army to recruit any Israeli who ever served in the army to an emergency uh, security situation. The IDF, the Israeli army, is made up of mostly reserved armed forces. These are soldiers who finished their active service and they run a usual life. They have a job, they have a family, but they have never really been discharged from the IDF up until their 40s or even 50s. Once every few months, they are being called up to their base for further training in order to make sure they still remember how to watch each other's back, how to know what their colleague next to them needs, and what is their position when emergency happens. They know exactly where in their closet their kit bag is with the uniform. Each unit has a password, and I know it by heart, of course. The minute they hear this password through the media, there's a way the media knows how to broadcast these passwords, or the minute they get into their hands a written Tzav Shmone, disorder number eight, they know this is an emergency situation and they know where to show up and what is their duty. They don't start their ongoing training when a war breaks. That would be way too late for that. When a war breaks, they already know what to do. So in the past few days, as these um, 21 days prayer initiative goes on, there's a growing feeling inside me that millions around the world have been recruited to a boot camp. It's not just praying for Israel. It's not just about our needs and our place in God's plan. It's also about training each one of you. It's not yet an emergency order. It's not yet Tzav Shmone because we don't know yet um, how to watch each other's back and where exactly we are positioned in his army. But um, I believe God has called each one of us to our reserved duty training in order to teach us how to act as one body for one cause. He's training us now, teaching us how to sharpen our swords, how to prepare a quiver full of arrows, meaning accurate verses that you can shoot to the bull's eye, how to prepare our personal weapons, making sure that our shield and our helmet and our shoes are ready in the kit bag, in the closet, well, ironed and oiled with the right kind of oil. We know that a great, big, mighty army is coming one day against Jerusalem and against Israel and is going to fight us, fight Israel. We all know that at the peak of that terrible war, God will show up and reveal the Jewish faces of the Jewish Messiah to the whole world, and he will give the death blow. But he's not going to fight this war alone. He's recruited, recruiting each one of us to this war, and he's training us right now so that we know our position and our place when that takes place. He's not going to start training us when the war breaks. He's already preparing us. During these weeks of prayer, you can see Lists are being made, numbers are counted, but most important, everyone who's being recruited to this boot camp 
learns something about this unseen wall that God is building around Israel. Regretfully, in this wall there are many, many holes. We don't have enough believers in the land who can hold hands together, even if we join up everyone, to encircle this wall. It's way bigger than our ability. We need more hands, and this is why God is recruiting His bride worldwide, His warring bride. This is a mission that is not logical. It goes against all logic. It's beyond human ability. How can human beings, five million, you know what? Even a hundred millions erect such a wall. I don't think we can even try and understand the power meter, the perimeter of this wall. It reminds me in a way the one Nehemiah had built when he wanted to restore Jerusalem. He managed to do that. He managed to go deeper and build the um, the temple only when each watchman knew their exact position, but also knew who is next to them. Not just what are they being trained to, what is their little kingdom, what is their sphere of influence, but how is it connected to others, to your right, to your left, back and forth. So how will you know your place on that wall? My suggestion is um, that you pay further attention to the things you carry in your heart anyway. Things that naturally you've, you, you're interested in, or they fit your calling, or they even fit your woundedness, the suffering that your life has been going through. It may be single parent families, soldiers, Holocaust survivors, the elders at the gate, unity in the body, cooperation between Jews and Arabs, students, Messianic students, evangelism, um, um, abortions. It's a big wound in, our, in the soul of our nation. The government, maybe, the Orthodox community. Choose one or two areas that are so dear to your hearts and look for promises in God's word. Look for promises. Look for verses that talk about it and prepare yourselves a quiver. Prepare those verses, sharpen those swords, study those verses, make the words in those verses your vocabulary as you pray for Israel. Make them arrows in the hand of a mighty warrior. Like swords, you can wave when Tzav Shmone, when that emergency order will be sent, when the password will be heard, when you think of Israel, start training yourselves with these verses. How will you know where the holes are? Psalms 122 teaches us to pray for Jerusalem. This is how we're used to cite this psalm, but really more accurately, it doesn't say just pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It doesn't just say go through a checklist and one line would say there should be peace in Jerusalem and you can mark it. No, it says something deeper. It says ask what is happening with the peace in Jerusalem. Sha'alu shlom Yerushalayim. And if you start asking, you will find out that there is no peace. And you'll find out the reasons for that. And you will be recruited for specific prayer. Um, the best way to do that is to learn the weak points of our nation and to get involved with a ministry, with a congregation, with some messianic activity taking place in the land. So you learn the details from within. The best way is to connect to contact, keep in touch with what's happening in the land in that specific area, this spot on the wall that is dear to your heart. Don't get involved with too many things because then you won't be able to train yourselves and your muscles very specifically. If you don't know how to connect with the right organization or ministry that is dear to your heart, you can contact us in those, you, you see those details here. 
on the, at the bottom. You can contact us, tell me what's on your heart, and I will connect you with the right ministry in the land. And in the meantime, I want to encourage you to be well aware of this general worldwide recruitment and also ask yourselves, am I truly willing to be recruited and available in times of emergency? And are my weapons, is my kit bag ready? So that when Tsar Shmone, when order number, number eight gets into my hands, my spirit, my mind, from the most supreme general, the Lord of hosts, I can say, here I am.